Dodged 51 over here. I hope you're having a splendid day wherever you are in the world. We're back on the Motorsport Lounge, back for another podcast, this time talking about the American Grand Prix. Now guys, today, once again, I'm running this one solo. Una momento, por favor. That means wait one moment. I can't believe I just said that, but not the point. If you think I'm funny, drop a like. <laughs> <laughs> Not the point, guys. Um, guys, basically, just to give you guys a quick little um, insight to, to our lives. Obviously, I'm here. Booster is busy with college work along with Demi. Johnny is stuck at work tonight when we were report, re reporting the part, well, recording the podcast. Yanku is also actually busy studying for exams, so he will not be able to make it, as well as JD Pie. Milani is at this stage very sick, guys, so please, one like equals one prayer for Milani. And who am I missing out? Who am I missing out? I'm missing... Oh, and Jess. Jess is actually also stuck at work and busy with her studies um, for university. So it's, it's a very busy time of the year. So I can understand why these guys are currently not able to help with the podcast. But it sounds like Johnny will be back next week for the Mexican Grand Prix podcast. So heading into this podcast, guys, let's get straight into it and let's go. The race results... So let's head straight in towards the 2021 American Grand Prix race results. Max Verstappen won the Grand Prix for Red Bull in 1 hour 34 minutes and 34.552 seconds, banking a full 25 World Championship points. Lewis Hamilton came in P2 for Mercedes 1.3 seconds behind Verstappen but gaining fastest lap, so Lewis takes home not 18 points but 19. Sergio Perez was third for Red Bull, 42 seconds behind the leader, um, banking 15 points. I take my hat off to Sergio Perez for not having any water or any drink throughout that race. The fact that Sergio made it through that Grand Prix is a miracle by itself. Charles Leclerc was in P4 for Ferrari with Daniel Ricciardo P5 for McLaren. Valtteri Bottas was in P6 for Mercedes with Carlos Sainz 7th in the second Ferrari. Lando Norris was 8th in the second McLaren with Yuki Tsunoda being the only Alpha Tauri finisher in P9 banking 2 points and Sebastian Vettel coming from the back of the grid to finish in P10 for Aston Martin taking the final World Championship point. Antonio Giovinazzi was in P11 for Alfa Romeo, um, with, uh, followed by Lance Stroll in P12 for Aston Martin. Kimi Raikkonen was in P13 for Alfa Romeo, with George Russell in P14 for Williams, followed by his teammate Nicholas Latifi in P15. Um, Mick Schumacher was in P16, the first of the two Haas drivers, ahead of his teammate Nikita Mazepin. And your three DNFs were Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon for Alpine, and finally the other Alfa Tauri of Pierre Gasly. Now heading towards the Constructors' Championship after the American Grand Prix, Haas Ferrari was still in P10 on 0 points, with Alfa Romeo Ferrari in P9 on 7 points, Williams Mercedes were in P8 on 23 points, with Aston Martin Mercedes on 62 points in P in P7. P6 is Alfa Tauri Honda on 94 points, only 10 points behind Alpine Renault in 5th on 104 points. Ferrari maintained P4 on 250.5 points, just 3.5 points behind McLaren Mercedes in P3 on 254 points. And your two leaders in the constructors are Red Bull Racing Honda on 437.5 points and Mercedes AMG Petronas Racing on 460 points. Points. Now before we head into the rest of the podcast guys, before we get to the talking points, let's just quickly run through the Drivers' Championship standings after the American Grand Prix. Nikita Mazepin is still in P20 on 0 points, with Mick Schumacher in P19 also on 0 points. Antonio Giovinazzi is in P18 on 1 singular point, with Kimi Raikkonen in P17 on 6 points. Nicholas Latifi is in P16 on 7 points, with George Russell in P15 on 16 points. Yuki Tsunoda is now in P14 on 20 points, um, just behind Lance Stroll for Aston Martin in P13 on 26 points. He is behind his teammate Sebastian Vettel in P12 on 36 points, and um, rounding out to 20th to 11th is Esteban Ocon in P11 on 46 points. Breaking into the top 10 is Fernando Alonso also for Alpine on 58 points, Pierre Gasly is in P9 on 74 points, Daniel Ricciardo is in P8 on 105 points, Carlos Sainz 
Sainz is in P7 on 122.5 points, with Charles Leclerc in P6 on 100 on a 128 points. Lando Norris is in P5 on 149 points, with Sergio Perez in P4 on 150, just one point ahead of Lando Norris. Valtteri Bottas is now in P3 on 185 points, and your top two fighting for the Drivers' World Championship is Lewis Hamilton in P2 on 275.5 points, 12 points behind Max Verstappen on 287.5 points. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. Let's jump straight into the talking points for today's podcast, guys. And <clears throat> basically, I'm like Boosted always says, I want to give credit where credit is due. An amazing start from Lewis Hamilton. Lewis did exactly what he needed in the first stint. Getting off the line ahead of Verstappen, giving Max a little bit of a squeeze going through turn one and coming out of the first corner in the lead. That is what Mercedes needed because I think Mercedes knew if they let Verstappen go in the lead, they were not. They didn't have the pace to catch Verstappen. Um, so Lewis had to lead from had that had to lead in front to be able to stand a chance to win this grand prix and we all saw heading into the final few laps how close this race ended so hamilton just an amazing start and an amazing first stint from lewis he really really just kept the car planted on the track even though he couldn't really get out of us out of that one second barrier to max max had drs ever as soon as it was activated but max still, still couldn't get past lewis um so just an amazing start from the seven, six time, no, seven, yes, yeah, seven time world champion, trying to become an eight time world champion. Then uh, the second thing that I want to allude to, which to me was basically the highlight of lap one and one of the big best highlights of the race, was the battle between Carlos Sainz, um, Daniel Ricciardo, and Lando Norris. So basically the two McLarens versus the second Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. Um, Guys, every time I watch that battle on a social media platform, I get goosebumps from the start. Going down the back straight, I mean, Ricardo went for the move on Sainz and Norris decided to get in on the fight as well. They went three wide into the, the, the left-hander at the end of the straight, still went side by side into the next coming right-hander where Ricardo went for a switchback after Lando overtook him, got back on the inside of Lando and heading in towards the flat-out quadruple right-hander um, with, uh, well, it's basically the the third to last corner ricardo just swooshed it up the inside of signs and to see those three drivers and two of them being ba still very young talented drivers and ricardo being a seasoned veteran that was phenomenal to see not a smidge of contact no to going too risky or making silly silly moves just pure clean wheel to wheel action packed racing it <clears throat> My opinion on that is that was honestly the battle of the race for me. Um, the fact that they were just side by side for so many corners to come. Then it was Sainz and Norris. Then Sainz and Ricardo. Then three wide. Then again Sainz and Ricardo. And uh, oh, it was just fantastic. And basically, Sainz and 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 Ricardo's battle throughout that entire race was really something that kept my attention. So beautiful, beautiful racing there from those three drivers. And I will get into this into the Sainz Ricardo battle a little bit later on. But let's move on. Red Bull's brilliant, brilliant undercut strategy. Now, obviously, like I talked when we when we started with the talking points, guys, was Hamilton had the perfect first stint, in my opinion. Um, we all know the Red Bull was 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 very similarly matched to the Mercedes on pace, quality, and race pace. Um, and the thing is, Red Bull pulled the plug early to go for the undercut to get Max into the lead. Now we've seen this this undercut overcut strategy between Red Bull and Mercedes for a fair while now for a fair few years to be honest. But what I want to allude to is with the whole undercut strategy, yes that one Max the race, but the thing that won Max the race more after well at the end of the first stint Perez was still within overtaking distance of Hamilton if he pitted. So uh, after Red Bull pit for Stappen, Hamilton couldn't just stay out forever and try a massive overcut strategy because Perez was constantly there as a threat. Because Red Bull, after they pitted for Stappen, they pitted Perez, and Perez was obviously quicker than Lewis on his fresh tires. And if Lewis stayed out too long, he would have got the undercut by Perez, and then Lewis would have completely lost this race. I don't even think he would have been able to get past Perez for the rest of the race. Maybe past Perez, but he wouldn't have, have had the opportunity to chase after Max. So, 
the fact that 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 Red Bull had the second car there, uh, Verstappen had his rear gunner, which was um, Perez, which in previous races and previous years, Verstappen was the, the, the sitting duck and Hamilton and Bottas were the two Mercedes bullying Verstappen into strategies that, that cost him the race. Um, and I feel the fact that Perez was the rear gunner for Max is what won Max that race because if Lewis could have extended that final stint well that, sorry that that first stint just a few more laps even just five more laps it would have been a completely different race at the end and I think then Hamilton would have caught Verstappen um, because Hamilton's tires did start to feel it at the end and the fact that Lewis didn't have supreme grip throughout his final stint because he had to put earlier on his at the end of his first stint is uh, I think what gave Verstappen that race. There's a lot of, of tiny factors. I mean, you can even even factor in Mick Schumacher giving Verstappen DRS on the main straight. But for me, the big the, the big loss for Hamilton was because he couldn't go as long as he wanted on his first stint because Perez was the rear gunner for Verstappen. Um, and it's the first time in so long where it's actually Mercedes who are on the back foot because they don't have their rear gunner there. Um, so it was fantastic to see actually Mercedes working, working, working on a strategy on the back foot and them almost so closely getting getting the strategy right. Um, but I just wanted to say it. It Perez was was literally the perfect rear gunner for Max. And Max's undercut strategy, because he had Perez to help him there, the undercut strategy was a brilliant strategic um, choice made by Red Bull. Um, so, just fantastic, fantastic performance from Red Bull overall. Um, and um, now we're going back to the thing that I talked about before the whole Red Bull saga. And that is the Sainz and Ricardo race long battle. All I said was just absolutely epic. Guys, there were so many times where Ricardo and Sainz went side by side, and Ricardo actually drove a phenomenal race, keeping Sainz behind him. The Ferrari, to me, it was clear that, that, that the Ferrari was the quicker car this weekend. Um, I mean, if you look at Leclerc in P4, as soon as he was released by Sainz, Ricardo, and Norris, he was gone. He, he actually he started to catch Perez in the final stint of the race um, after when the second stoppers or everybody stopped for their second stop um, the Ferrari was was quicker than Perez in the Red Bull on a on low fuel so <clears throat> excuse me um, so that to me was just awesome and the fact that Ricardo kept signs behind him for basically the rest of that race to me was absolutely awesome to see I was a bit disappointed that, that, that Lando couldn't get in on that fight because I think Norris would have made it a much more interesting fight. But like I said, the Ferrari was just the quicker car this weekend and N Norris just couldn't get on pace with, with, with Sainz to close up to the rear end of Ricardo. Um, but that battle between Sainz and Ricardo was absolutely epic. And um, I hope we it wasn't the final time that we've seen it this season before the regulation change next season. Um, Sainz and Ricardo really they they gave us something very juicy to look at for that entire race when stuff at the front was was getting a bit boring with Lewis just closing down Max and there's not really much happening we went to the Sainz and Ricardo battle and that kept our our interest in the race and that is what I loved if, and if it wasn't Sainz and Ricardo it was Fernando Alonso going for these very very insane moves now two drivers I quickly want to mention who had awesome races was Perez and Leclerc. Um, guys, Perez has, has now had his second podium in a row, and I think Sergio is finally starting to get that confidence in the Red Bull that he's needed throughout this season. And what I mean by that is we all know from from recent history how hard it, it is to drive that Red Bull, especially alongside Max Verstappen. And Sergio, yes, he's still not on pace with Max, but race pace wise, he has he has baited himself a lot. And Sergio is actually really being the rear gunner, like I said uh, just a few minutes ago, that Max needs. And because the cars are changing so drastically next year with their aerodynamics and their chassis, if Sergio gets a hold of that car quicker than Verstappen, Sergio is going to be a big, big influence in next year's championship. Um, 
I think for next year, the drivers with more experience are going to be the drivers that adapt the quickest. I can be wrong, that's just my honest opinion. And Perez is one of the most experienced drivers on the grid. With Kimi leaving at the end of the season, the only two people who are more experienced than Perez is Hamilton, Alonso and Vettel. That's the only drivers who are more experienced. Then Perez slots into P4 with that one. Um, and I think it's really going to be a, a very interesting thing to see what happens next year with these new technical regulations. It's going to be phenomenal. And then going towards Charles Leclerc, guys, like I said, after he broke away from Ricardo Sainz and Norris, he was untouchable. I mean, even when Bottas finally overtook Sainz and Ricardo, he, uh, sorry, he only overtook Sainz. He was on his way to Ricardo, but he ran out of laps. Still, Charles was just in a world of his own, uh, only ending 10 seconds behind Perez in P3, actually being there for the podium if one of the leaders slipped up. That's all you want. And like Boosted said a few podcasts ago, you have a successful weekend when you beat your rivals. And Ferrari's rivals at this stage is McLaren. Because they, it's it's them who they're in a championship fight with for P3 and the Constructors. And Ferrari beat them. You had Leclerc in P4, which that was that 12 points. And Sainz in P7, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check. Yes, Sainz in P7. So that is 16 points for Ferrari. And McLaren gaining P5 and P8. That's 10 and that's 14 points. So Ferrari just had two points more. Just two points more than McLaren. But... The thing is they beat their rivals and that is the main thing they beat their rivals and that is what what was needed for ferrari the gap between ferrari and mclaren are so close that it's it's actually shocking and obviously me being a ferrari fan i hope ferrari take it at the end of the year but it's really hard to choose between my two favorite teams which is ferrari and mclaren so I'm obviously going to stick to my guns. I'll always support that prancing horse and um, that scarlet red. That is just, that's where my love lies within Formula 1 when it comes to a team. Um, so we'll see what happens. But nevertheless, this battle for P3 and the Constructors is still going to get very, very juicy. Um, because there's a few, we've got what now, five races left. We've got Mexico, uh, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Abu Dhabi. And some of those tracks of Ferrari are more into Ferrari's strength, and some of these tracks are more to McLaren's strength. So it's it, it's it's any it's anybody's game for P3. Um, and if you guys are watching, let me know in the comments down below who you're supporting for P3 and the contractors. Are you with me on the Ferrari side or with me on the McLaren side? Um, let me know in the comments down below. So <clears throat> moving on, and we're actually running through these topics really quick. This might be one of the shorter podcasts. It's boring when when I can't talk to someone. Yeah. It's okay, I'm talking to you guys. You guys are amazing. So, Alonso's heroics on Giovinazzi. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm talking specifically about the move where Alonso went for the dive up the inside of Giovinazzi at the end of the back straight. And just was way too late onto the brakes. Went completely off track and still made the move stick on Giovinazzi. He, he left the track and gained an advantage and eventually had to give the position back. But... Once again, Alonso has had a weekend where he's challenged the stewards' rulings a lot. We're looking at the battle that he had with Kimi before Giovinazzi. Him and Kimi made contact. Kimi re-overtook him off track. Um, Alpine um, appealed that even though Kimi had, Kimi had nowhere to go because Fernando did put him where he put him. But obviously, Alonso just shoving it once again towards the stewards and... Um, and going for that move on Giovinazzi, he did give the position back to Giovinazzi, but literally just a few laps later, Giovinazzi did the same to Alonso. He tried to defend, went off, went off track, gained an advantage and kept the position, and he was forced to give the position to Fernando. So, I love to see the side of, of Fernando. I know a lot of people do not like it because they they feel it's a, it's a lost cause, but I love to see Alonso challenging the stewards and just him being... This is right. This is wrong. Please start making the right choices. Um, and it's it's actually very it's 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 um, humorous to see, and it's also just freaking amazing that he he is one of two drivers who actually has the balls to take on the stewards because it's it's just him and Vettel. The rest of the drivers are just like, no, the stewards. Okay, they said this. I'm not happy, but I'm not going to fight it. Alonso and 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 Vettel are just like, no, you made the wrong choice. Please fix it. And if you're not going to fix it, I'm going to use this towards my advantage on the track. I mean, we go back to Russia where Alonso just basically skipped turn two. And he just went, yeet, 
got himself up into P4, battled with the, with the leaders. If not, why not? I mean, <laughs> so Alonso, um, I love to see this. Now, obviously, I've got a soft spot for Giovinazzi, so I didn't like the fact that he actually, you know, he was picking a bit on Giovinazzi, but it could have been any driver, and, um, <laughs> Alonso was just the once again Alonso doing Alonso things and it was actually getting into my next point actually a very terrible weekend for Alpine I mean obviously Alonso took um, started at the back of the grid thanks to engine penalties and yet both Al uh, Alpines retired due to the same issue I'm not sure what the issue is guys but I know it was some sort of problem with their rear wing I don't know how that can be a terminal issue but it was so it, to me it was really just sad to see both Alpines out especially because I'm such a big Alonso fan I want to see Alpine do good because that's the team he's driving for and yet both of them DNF'd. So that to me was really a hard pill to swallow. But it's not the end of the world. Hopefully Alpine will bounce back this weekend in Mexico. I'm sure they will. Um, because the power deficit at Mexico is not as bad. Because it's not a coastline track. It's a track that's very... Um, it's got a high altitude. So all the engines have got a lot similar power there than when they're at, at these tracks that are close to the coast. Um... So I think Alpine can do good this weekend, and I know Alonso is somebody that loves this, this the Hormanos Rodriguez circuit in Mexico. So we'll see what what Alonso and Ocon can do this coming weekend. Now, sensational from Sebastian Vettel, P10 baby, guys. That move that he made on George Russell around the outside at that quadruple right hander. It's it's basically a corner that's stolen from Turkey in Istanbul Park. Reason one of the reasons I hate the, the Kota circuit. Not the point. That move around the outside of, of, of Russell was absolutely phenomenal. And Vettel's final stint pace was honestly so, so good. He was faster than everybody up until Leclerc. Leclerc, um, Perez, Hamilton and Verstappen were the only drivers quicker than Vettel in that final stint. Vettel was quicker than Bottas, quicker than Sainz, quicker than Ricardo, quicker than Norris, quicker than Sonoda. And he just had a phenomenal drive in that final stint. Um, so, well done, Sebastian Vettel. It's maybe just one point for Aston Martin, but every point counts. I think Aston Martin are really sealed for seventh in the constructors. I don't think they have it, they have it in them to catch Alpha Tari and Alpine and battle for P5. But still, considering where they started this year, where they looked slower than the Alfa Romeos at some tracks, I think a P7 would be a good way to end off the season and head into next season. Um, so just well done, Sebastian Vettel. I saw a bit of the old Seb there, and it was fantastic to see. Heading into our final two topics, guys. Mercedes were the fastest car in the hands of Hamilton. Now, what I mean by this is Valtteri, uh, well, Bottas. Bottas didn't have a bad weekend. Obviously, Bottas also started to the back of the grid because of engine penalties. But Hamilton was just on another level this weekend. It wasn't something that Bottas did or Bottas was slow or he set up the car wrong or something. Hamilton was just was just functioning on a different level this weekend. Hamilton and Verstappen both. Um, <clears throat> I heard Crofty talking about it after the race that Hamilton and Verstappen have lifted themselves so much higher than the rest of the drivers because of this intense championship battle that it looks like they're schooling the other drivers and they're not it's not that they are degrading the other the other drivers talents and performances it's just because they are focusing so hard on beating each other they've elevated their own performances to such an extent that they look like formula one and the rest of the grid looks like formula 1.5 or formula 2 um and Crofty had a good point there. Both Lewis and Max realized that this is an insane, intense fight. And both of them are fighting for a certain something. Hamilton wants to break Schumacher's record of seven world ch championships. He wants to get his eighth. Max wants to win his first world championship in this current era of F1 cars. He doesn't want to do it with the next cars. He, 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 well, obviously he wouldn't mind. But I think... For Verstappen, he just because he's he's been in Formula One with this V6 hybrid era, it would be something special to win a Formula One World Championship in your first era of Formula One technical regulations. I know for some drivers of the past that was a thing. I don't know if it's a thing for Max. I'm going out on a limb here, but that would be special for Verstappen. And to come back to the to the Lewis was the was the fastest car in the hands of Hamilton. If you look at Hamilton's second and third stints, even his first stint, the Mercedes was the quicker car than the Red Bull. But 
Red Bull out strategized Mercedes once again to referring to what I said earlier if it wasn't for Perez Hamilton would have won that race because Perez forced Hamilton at the end of his first stint into a certain strategy if Hamilton could have extended that his second stint would have been totally different and he most probably would have got onto mediums for his final stint not the hards and that would have given him like a, at, at least a second a lap on Verstappen and then he would have won the race but it's just Red Bull out strategized Mercedes because they only they could only strategize with Lewis for the race win but Lewis had was the fastest driver this weekend point um, and if if Bottas is going to back Lewis up for, for, for other races further along this season, we might see a very different story if we have a scenario like this at one of the other tracks. Just just watch out because Mercedes have really stepped up their game from where they were at the beginning of the season. They really, really, really have. So um, Red Bull need to be looking over their shoulders. I just I, I just thought I'd mention that. But and the, the final topic. Oh, finally, I can say something good about him. Yuki freaking Sonoda. P9 for the Alpha Tauri, man. Brilliant race from Sonoda. Obviously, we talked about him in the previous Grand Prix with the Turkish Grand Prix, guys. His fantastic defense against Hamilton. But eventually, he spun in the race and ruined his own race. This weekend, he was fighting for the, for the points throughout the race, and he managed P9. And that is the exact performances that I said literally in the previous podcast Yuki needs to start delivering and he has so That's a hand for Yuki Sonoda. Let's keep the momentum going go boy. Let's keep the momentum going Brilliant race from Yuki Sonoda But guys that has been the talking points we've we've run through that We've ran through that a lot quicker than I thought but it's because I'm doing this alone, but it's okay I will forgive my motorsport lounge members <laughs> But guys let's head into the driver ratings for the 2021 American Grand Prix so, Haas, Mazepin gets a 1 out of 10 and Schumacher a 2 out of 10. Nothing special from Haas this weekend, just being once again the back markers on the field. And we basically didn't see them all the race long. I don't think we did. We just saw Schumacher when Max over, over, over well, lapped him on uh, going onto the final lap. That's the only place I can remember seeing a Haas. Um, so, 1 for, for Mazepin, 2 for Schumacher. Um, into the, to the, going towards the two Alfa Romeos, Giovinazzi gets a 7 out of 10. Um, just a good weekend from Giovinazzi, outperforming Raikkonen. Obviously, Raikkonen had his spin with, I think, what, three to four laps to go. Um, but just solid weekend from both Alfa Romeos as well. Kimi costing himself a bit in that final stint. He was able to get points, but threw it a bit away. But I think Kimi's tires were, were a, little, a little bit donezo. So, um, and Kimi gets a six out of ten. Good weekend from Alfa Romeo. Heading towards the two Williams drivers, Nicholas Latifi gets a 4 out of 10. Just once again, like the horses, didn't see much of either of the Williams uh, cars or drivers. And Russell gets a 5 out of 10. Heading in towards the two Aston Martins, Stroll gets a 7 out of 10. Once again, good performance on Stroll. Not points, but not a bad performance. His teammate Sebastian Vettel with, it, with his amazing final stint gets an 8 out of 10. Once again, just that move uh, around the outside of Russell. Absolutely fantastic. Vettel gets an 8 out of 10. Heading in towards the, in towards the two Alpha Tauris. Yuki Sonoda with his brilliant, brilliant performance and points finish gets a 9 out of 10. It's so good to give Sonoda a good mark finally. And then uh, P.A. Gasly obviously with his DNF guys had a good qualifying. Um, well decent qualifying but the race just didn't go his way. So Gasly gets a 4 out of 10. And next up we've got the two Alpines. But Ocon gets a 4 out of 10. Nothing exceptional, nothing disappointing. Just, a, you know, if he finished the race, he probably would have gotten a 6. But good average weekend from Ocon. Alonso fighting back from, from the back of the grid. Having a good race until he suffered the same problems as Ocon. Alonso gets a 6 out of 10. Um, heading towards the two Ferraris. Signs with his brilliant battle with Norris and Ricardo, mainly with Ricardo, gets an 8 out of 10. And Leclerc just being Leclerc in P4, just making sure that nobody can touch him from behind. Leclerc gets a 9 out of 10. Towards the two McLarens, Ricardo gets a 9 out of 10. Also, Ricardo had a beautiful bounce back race after his previous race in Turkey, so well, do well done to Danny Rick. Um, and then Norris gets a P7, average weekend from, from Lando, nothing to be disappointed about. Heading in towards the two Mercedes, Bottas gets a 7 out of 10, good recovery, I think he could have done a bit better, but it was a hard weekend for Bottas, but nothing too bad. Hamilton, 8 out of 10, 
brilliant ra racing at the end there to try and, and catch up to Verstappen. And um, I really think Lewis has had a performance there that he can be proud of. And finally, the two Red Bulls. Sergio Perez, beautiful P3. Did what he needed to do throughout that race. He gets a 9 out of 10. And uh, Verstappen, obviously, brilliant strategizing from Red Bull. Brilliant racing from Verstappen. Brilliant tire management come the end of the, come the, end of the race. And Verstappen gets a full 10 out of 10. Now... Let's head into what the team ratings um, for the self-created constructors. The standings after the previous round, round 16, Haas were in P10 on 108 points, Alfa Romeo in P9 on 161 points, Williams in P8 on 166 points, Alfa Tauri P7 on 179 points, just two points behind Aston Martin in sixth on 181 points. We had Alpine and Mercedes tied for P4 on 198 points. McLaren went P3 on 224 points. And it was a tie for P1 between Ferrari and Red Bull on 244 points. Now the standings after this round, round 17, the American Grand Prix. Haas are still in P10 on 111 points. Alfa Romeo are still in 9th on 174 You've got Williams still occupying P8 on 175. Alpha Tauri are now still in P7 with 192. Sixth is Aston Martin, so the 10th to 6th have not changed. Aston Martin P6 on 196. Alpine have dropped to 5th behind Mercedes now on 208 points. Mercedes occupy P4 on 213 points. McLaren are still sitting pretty in P3 on 240 points. Ferrari have dropped down to P2 after Red Bull's exceptional weekend. Um, they are on 261 points. But they're only two points behind Red Bull who are in first place on 263 points. Now, heading into the next part of the podcast, guys. I should actually have done this two podcasts ago, but because of the hectic time that, that the, the, the whole team at the Motorsport Lounge have gone through, it completely just flew us, uh, flew past us. So, remember we had a thing after the British Grand Prix. It's called uh, the Driver of the Season. Yep, the Driver Ratings Championship. So, we are going to see who is currently in the lead of, to, to, to get that beautiful prize of Driver of the season now the standings after round 10 back at the british grand prix was nikita mazepin in p20 on 26 points schumacher in p54 points antonio giovanazzi in 16th on 57 points only one pokon in p14 on 58 points valtteri bottas was, bottas was in p13 on 60 points tied for 12th and 11th on points was sebastian vettel and george russell on 63 points Lance Stroll was in P10 on 66 points. Fernando Alonso was in P9 on 68 points. Only one point behind Daniel Ricciardo in 8th on 69 points. Pierre Gasly was in 7th on 70 points. Lewis Hamilton in P6 on 73 points. Sergio Perez in P5 on 75 points. Carlos Sainz in P4 on 80 points. Um, and your podium sitters were Charles Leclerc in P3 on 85 points. Lando Norris in P2 on 91 points. And Max Verstappen was leading the way on 96 points. Now, the standings after round 17. And we're going to do this again at literally the end of the season, guys. With like probably the final podcast of the season. Or we'll do it in a completely separate podcast. But you guys will be getting the results of this at the end of the season. But as it stands now, after the 17th round in America. Nikita Mazepin is still in P20 on 37 points. Max Schumacher has dropped from 18th to 19th on 74 points. But he's only one point behind Nicholas Latifi in 18th on 75 points. Kimi Raikkonen has dropped to 17th on 83 points. Actually tied with Yuki Tsunoda in 16th on 83 points. Antonio Giovinazzi is in P15 on 91 points. Esteban Ocon is actually still in P14 on 95 points. One point behind the Aston Martin driver of Lance Stroll in 13th on 96 points. Valtteri Bottas is in P12 on 99 points. And the first driver to hit triple digits in P11 is Sebastian Vettel, who's actually still tied with George Russell on 100 points. 
So it's Vettel P11, Russell P10, and then the rest of your top 10 is Daniel Ricciardo in P9 on 106 points. Pierre Gasly is down to P8 on 108 points. Fernando Alonso has made a massive jump with his points to P7 on 111 points. Lewis Hamilton is still in P6 on, 100, on 114 points, one point behind the Red Bull driver of Sergio Perez on 115 points. Carlos Sainz is in P4 on 130 points, with Charles Leclerc in P3 on 131 points. The two Ferraris are so close with one, an with one another. Lando Norris is in P2 on 134 points, and Max Verstappen leads the way by a fair margin now on 149 points. Now basically, you've got a battle from P19 to P16 between Schumacher, Latifi, Raikkonen, and Sonoda. You've got a battle to from P15 to P11 to P9 actually between Giovinazzi, Ocon, Stroll, Bottas, Vettel, Russell and Ricardo. Then you've got a battle from P8 to P5 between um, Gasly, Alonso, Hamilton and Perez and then a battle for second place between Sainz, Leclerc and Norris because I don't think anybody is going to catch Max if he keeps up these performances but um, we'll have to see at the end of the season. I think this driver of the season um, championship is going to get very very interesting now guys heading in towards the, the the motorsport lounge predictions championship for the american grand prix let's run through the predictions we made for america i said a ferrari podium missed out on it by one position alonso beat ocon which he did even though both uh, alpines retired because Alonso drove longer than Ocon and he basically was ahead of Ocon by the end of lap one that that, that classifies it as Alonso beating his teammates so I get the five points and a Norris top eight Lando got eighth so I am very lucky in that sense <laughs> Demi said Giovinazzi in the points unfortunately not Russell say uh, she said Russell in the points and Mercedes and Red Bull crash. She unfortunately got a big fat round zero, unlike my 10 points. So sorry about that, Demi. Johnny said Russell gets a top 10. That it was that, that was incorrect. Both Ferraris in the top 10. That's where he got his five points and a Bottas win. Which unfortunately did not happen. So Johnny takes home five points. Jess said at least one wet session, a Ferrari top three, and Ocon or Sonoda top 10. Sonoda was in 10th place. So that is five points for Jess. Well done Jess. Boosted said a turn one incident in the race which there was. Uh, you had the contact between um, I think it was Stroll and Ocon. Somebody sh sp span Ocon a a in ahead of Stroll but the point is there was an incident. Ocon beats Alonso. Ha! Boosted. You got that one wrong and I got the, the one right which was the opposite. And he said a Norris top five which didn't happen. So Boosted gets his five points for the turn one incident. Yanku said Bottas beats Hamilton, which didn't happen. Then he said Ricardo bounces back, which did happen, so he gets five points for that. And Hamilton not on the podium, which didn't happen. Lewis was on the podium. Milani said a Ferrari top five. Woot woot! Leclerc got P4. Verstappen keeps the championship lead, which also happened, so she gets a further five points for that. And a crash due to tire complication, which did not happen. So unfortunately, that was a very bold prediction but I like that she's trying a full 10 points for Milani and finally JD Pye said Verstappen keeps the championship lead which he did both Ferraris in the top 10 which happened and a Norris top 6 which unfortunately did not happen in any case let's now head in towards the standings after the previous round round 16 in turkey yanku was in p8 on 76 points tied for p5 was boosted johnny and jess on 81 points jd pie was in p4 on 82 points demi was in p3 on 86 points i myself was in p2 on 96 points and milani was still in first well was in first on 118 points and now the standings after round 17 at the American Grand Prix. Guys, you guys are not going to believe this. Yanku is now in P8 on 81 points. We've got a four-person tie for P4 between Jess, 
Demi, Boosted, and Johnny all sitting on 86 points. JD Pi has now moved up to third place on 92 points. I am still in second on 106 points. And Milani is still first on 128 points. I can't believe we've got a four way tie between Boosted, Johnny, Demi, and Jess. That is absolutely insane. But guys, the final thing for of this podcast before we say goodbye to each other today is the 2021 Mexican Grand Prix predictions, which is happening this weekend. Milani said Max stays um, in the lead of the championship, Ferrari top six, and a crash in the first five laps. Very interesting. I said a first first lap contact, Aston Martin top ten, and a Ferrari top ten. JD Pye said, Max extends championship lead, Perez on the podium, and McLaren top 10. Uh Uh-huh, I'm smelling a 16. Demi said, Ocon top 7, Perez win. Oh, wow. And bad pit stop for someone. So, guys, remember the rule. We need to go for two bold predictions and one easy. And I think the bold prediction there, there isn't really an easy prediction there. Because with Demi's luck, everybody's going to have a fluent, perfect pit stop. Uh, pit stop weekend so we'll see hopefully for Demi's sake it's not like that boosted said max wins ferrari overtake mclaren in the constructors and vettel beats alonso in the race very interesting to, to take the two former world champions they boosted then johnny said mclaren gain on ferrari both Red Bulls on on the podium again. So once again, they're going for a double Red Bull podium. Johnny clearly is a Red Bull biased. <laughs> and then uh, Johnny said, rain in one of the sessions. Not very likely if you know Mexico, but we will see what happens for Johnny's sake. Then Yanku said, Norris top five, Russell in Q3, and a crash in the race. Very possible. And finally, Jess said, Hamilton beats Verstappen. Alpine top 10 and a Gasly top 10. This is going to get very juicy very quickly. But guys, that has been the podcast for the 2021 American Grand Prix. Now, before you click off, I see your fingers. Don't hit that escape button or click your mouse the back button or on your phone click the back button. I am watching you. You might not see my face, but I'm watching you. You see me now? No, you don't because I'm that good. Guys, before you go and just just die of, of my cringiness, please make sure to go check out the links in the description down below. All the members of the Motorsport Lounges, their Instagram, social media um, uh, links are in the description down below. Check me out as well, guys. If you ever share one of my videos on your social media, I will give you a shout out um, on my social media as well as in a future video. And um, if you follow me, I will follow you back. Uh, guys, then also make sure to go check out my second YouTube channel, Ford So Watch Gaming, for some non-racing content. Very fun to be on there. And finally, please check out my South African gaming clan, Falcon Gaming. Now, before you leave, there's something that you got to do. Now, what is that again? Oh, yes. Did you guys know when you hit the like, the like button, it either illuminates blue or red, depending on what device you are. And if you hit the like, you're going to get that inner heart satisfaction of the the button just lighting up so you know what you need to do leave a like down below on this podcast it's highly appreciated and then there's a second button now if you guys remember when you were kids whenever there was a button in the house especially a red one that your parents told you do not press this button what did you do you were a a naughty little son of a gun and you went and pressed the button so I'm telling you now, don't press the button, but actually I, in my head, I'm like, please hit the button. So you see that red button that says subscribe. It's a bomb button. So press the button and then you'll see a little bell pops up. Click the bell and select all and the bomb will go off and you will officially be part of Turbo Fox Races and all the amazing content on this channel. So you know what to do. Hit the subscribe down below and don't forget to ding that bell, you beautiful person. Guys, with, with, before I get any more cringe, uh, my final thoughts before we head into Mexico this weekend. I think be very wary of Mercedes. They got, I think it's going to be a strong weekend for Mercedes. And I also think the battle between Ferrari and McLaren are going to get very juicy. As well as something that I, that I want to allude to the most. Keep an eye on the Alpine versus Alpha Tauri battle. 
I think that's going to be the most juicy story coming off this weekend. Just a little bit of a of a of a prediction. And guys, finally, um, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for staying till the end. You guys are amazing. It's fun to make podcasts for you guys. I give myself a lot of work, but you know what? It's okay. You guys need to have an awesome, awesome day, night, whenever you watch this video further. You guys are amazing. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers!